June is Pride Month, and all month long we're honoring the LGBTQ community. It can be challenging for anyone to find a position that understands your unique needs, but especially for LGBTQ people. So for that reason, we've invited two experts to talk about best practices for finding a friendly provider for both physical and mental needs. We have Dr. Barbara Warren, uh, the director, the senior director of LGBTQ programs and policies at Mount Sinai Health Systems Office for Diversity and Inclusion, and Dr. Ming Hao Lu is the director of the Friedman Transgender Program at Lenox Hill Hospital, Northwell Health. Good morning to both of you. Or thank morning. you guys. I'm so used to saying good morning on the Today Show. This could be any time of the day. <laughs> I think it's so important to set this up about maybe for both of you, the biggest challenges facing the LGBTQ community, because I think sometimes if you're not walking in someone's mm -hmm. shoes, you don't even recognize that it is a challenge mm -hmm. in the first place. So can you put this in perspective for other people as to why this is so important mm -hmm. to discuss? Absolutely. So I think one of the biggest challenges is even getting access to a knowledgeable and sensitive pr provider. Um, we often say that prevention is the best medicine, and if people are not getting access to care, then people in the community are not getting screened for conditions that can be more prevalent, um, such as heart disease, STDs, including HIV, and certain types of cancers. Um, in addition, I think another major challenge facing the community is mental health and also intimate part partner violence. I didn't even think about that part mm -hmm. of it, too. So again, you have the physical part of it, and you also mm -hmm. have the, the mental health aspect. What would you say about why this think, is so important? I think to follow up on uh, the idea of prevention and uh, getting uh, routine health care, particularly good primary care, so that it doesn't end up being a, an acute or a crisis in your health. I think one of the things that we really emphasize at Mount Sinai in training our, our providers and also is a huge issue in the LGBT community is the concept and the impact of minority stress. Mm. And minority stress is any kind of stress related to being a marginalized or ta targeted minority at, as many LGBTQ people still are. Mm -hmm. And it's really important for LGBTQ patients and people to understand that even if they have access to great affirmative care um, and in are in pretty good health, the accumulated stress or the secondary stress of worrying about uh, or anticipating discrimination, mm. prejudice, violence, some of the anti-LGBTQ sentiments and laws that are being passed now increases your risk factor for many, many diseases because what happens is when you get stressed, your heart rate increases, you um, have cortisol that's sustained over time, and as, as we know, as healthcare providers, that can lead to all kinds of chronic health conditions. So it's really important to be aware of that, and it's important for your providers to be aware of that, mm -hmm. particularly when they're doing preventative and wellness care for it. It makes a lot of sense. If you can't walk into a physician's office and talk to that physician and be your full self right. and be honest about your life, your lifestyle, all those things, that physician can't treat you, you know, effectively. Right. So with that said, Dr. Lou, let's break it down. How should someone go about finding um, an LGBTQ friendly provider? That's a great question. So one can do a basic search on Google, um, find providers and research more about their, the providers and the services they offer. Sites like ZocDoc also offer um, for people to search on their directory specifically for LGBTQ plus friendly providers. Hmm. In addition, um, GLMA, which used to be known as the Gay Lesbian Medical Association, also has a free nationwide provider search tool um, for LGBTQ plus friendly providers. Um, but really what my patients have found to be perhaps even more helpful is that um, they go through social media channels such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, and sometimes Reddit, mm -hmm. and they get referrals from other people in the community who've actually seen these doctors or other healthcare providers and been very pleased with the experience. So then let's take the next step then. Once you find a provider, how can you ensure that that person is a good fit for you? Well, one of the things I think it's important is to check out the website of the organization or the healthcare system that provider works for. Okay. If they don't uh, have an LGBT specific page or referral service or information or they don't advertise themselves, for example, as uh, an LGBT health equality leader, many, many healthcare systems now ascribe to the LGBT Healthcare Equality Index, which is a national benchmarking survey conducted by uh, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation, which really helps hospitals and healthcare providers put all the things into place that make LGBT healthcare uh, affirmative and effective in their um, hospitals. Also, if so, to look it up, find out are they an LGBT 
LGBTQ healthcare quality leader? Do they have an LGBTQ healthcare website? Um, also, when you get to the office, to look around before you even meet whoever the provider is going to be. Mm -hmm. Are you asked for your sexual orientation and gender identity, your partner status, mm -hmm. uh, on your intake forms? Is there LGBT uh, visual things in the, in the office? Do they have pride flags? Do they have the advocate, the National LGBTQ magazine is part of their magazines on display? Do they have pamphlets? All of these are signals that this is an environment that knows that LGBT people come to them, they want it to be visible, they want it to be welcoming. Um, and so those are all clues too. Um, but I agree with Dr. Liu, uh, referrals uh, from knowledgeable providers and also uh, friends in the community can be really, really powerful and important. That's so helpful. And you know, we talk about it a lot in the bigger cities, but in some of the rural areas too. I mean, you know, this is obviously people watching all over the country. Mm -hmm. It's important to try to have those resources. Thank you guys mm -hmm. both so much um, for coming in, Dr. Warren and Dr. Liu. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.